What's up guys, Mike here, and if you are not new to this channel, you know the deal by now. Today we are doing another video in the This NBA Player Is Not Human collection, and the player we are looking at today is the answer, Allen Iverson. So in this video, we're going to look at Allen Iverson's best NBA moments, the legacy he left on the game, and the financial effect he had on strip clubs in the Philadelphia area. So enough talking, let's just jump into five reasons why Allen Iverson was not human. Number five. High school God. As a junior playing basketball at Bethel High School, Allen Iverson averaged 32 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds a game while leading his team to a state championship victory. He was also named Virginia's Player of the Year, and already, at that time, people were saying that AI was one of the greatest basketball players that Virginia had ever seen. Night in and night out, Allen shocked fans with his incredible moves, and even his coach would say, just when I think I've seen it all, Allen does something else that amazes me. Which would make you think that in his hometown of Hampton, Virginia, everyone would consider Iverson a basketball legend. But at the time, many thought of him as a football player who also played basketball. As during the fall of his junior year, AI proved to be a star quarterback and instantly became one of the top football recruits in the nation. As playing for the Bethel football team, Allen also led his team to a state championship win and was also named Virginia's Football Player of the Year. As throughout that season, he showcased his ridiculous athleticism by throwing for 14 touchdowns, rushing for 15 touchdowns, returning nine total kicks and punts for touchdowns, and as a defensive back, intercepting eight passes. Yes, Allen Iverson was the ultimate high school athlete. And to emphasize just how good he was at football, let's listen to the words of his guardian at the time and eventual manager, Gary Moore, who said he was a far better football player than a basketball player. Far, far better. He was never supposed to be in the NBA. We were focused on the NFL. And if you're still not convinced at just how good Allen Iverson was at football, here's what longtime Virginia high school football coach Bo Henson had to say. I played against some great ones in 21 years, but he was the best that we played against, no question about it. Keep in mind that Bo Henson coached against Michael Vick, which means, of course, that Henson was saying that Allen Iverson was better than an eventual NFL pro bowler. So you may be asking yourself, why didn't Allen Iverson choose to play football? Well, I'm not going to dive too deep into that story because I could make a whole nother video on it, but just know that AI was involved in a bowling alley brawl that actually put him in jail for 15 years. Then, thankfully, footage showed that he was not actually a part of the fight and he was pardoned. But after that, he was still kind of seen as damaged goods, so his family had to beg Georgetown coach John Thompson to take him in as a player. From there, though, every Everything turned around, Allen Iverson dominated in college and was eventually the number one pick in the NBA draft. So let's continue with number four, pound for pound the greatest. In boxing, they have pound for pound rankings, which basically is a ranking of each fighter adjusted for their weight. In basketball, we obviously do not rank players like this, but if we did, many consider Allen Iverson to be the best pound for pound basketball player of all time. And it's not just other players like Dwayne Wade who think this. The numbers back this up too. As a player, Allen Iverson was listed at 6 feet tall, but everyone knew that was a lie. He was 5 foot 11 at most, if not 5 foot 10. This did not stop him, of course, from becoming an 11-time All-Star and eventual Hall of Famer. And just looking at the NBA Hall of Fame specifically here, right now AI is the last player 6 feet tall or under to get get inducted into the Hall of Fame since Calvin Murphy retired in 1983. Going even further, the list of Hall of Fame players that are 6 feet tall or under only has 10 names on it, and most of those guys played in the 1950s. So you can see, Allen Iverson was definitely special, and again, the numbers prove this. He is one of only 4 players in NBA history to average over 30 points per game in over 4 separate seasons in their career. The other three names on that list are Oscar Robertson, Wilt Chamberlain, and Michael Jordan. Allen was also a four-time NBA scoring champion. 
a seven-time All-NBA player, and in the best season of his career, he was named the 2001 MVP. Let's talk about that 2001 season, because when we take a look at all-time historic playoff performances, 2001 Allen Iverson ranks right up there with one of the best playoff runs we have ever seen. During the playoffs that year, Allen led a team that had a severe lack of talent all the way to the NBA Finals. The only other All-Star star on his roster was Dikembe Mutombo, who was 34 years old and averaged less than 12 points per game. And speaking of scoring, in the 2001 playoffs, AI averaged 33 points per game, while his next highest teammate, Aaron McKee, put up just 14.6. Already to me, just making the NBA Finals with this roster was a historic achievement. But Allen Iverson was not done yet. Again, his team was severely overmatched. The 2001 Lakers are known as one of the best teams of all time, and they lost just one game in the 2001 playoffs. That one game, though, was game one of the 2001 finals, a game in which Allen Iverson destroyed one of the best teams we have ever seen with a ridiculous 48-point explosion in a 6-point six Sixers win. That game, of course, included the famous Tyron Lue step over. A step over that came after AI hit yet another clutch jumper that put away a Sixers win. So sure, Allen Iverson never won a championship as a player, but he still had one of the most historic careers we have ever seen. Number three, strip club and dollar bills. Okay, so this topic is a little sensitive because of the fact that Allen Iverson has had money problems since his retirement. With that said, I feel like I need to show you just how much of a savage AI was off the court during his career. As we all know, Athletes love to go to strip clubs and they love to ball out at strip clubs. But in terms of dropping the most money, Allen Iverson might just have his own wing in the strip club hall of fame. Because based on a story told by Matt Barnes, AI would regularly go to strip clubs and drop 30 to $40,000 every time. As Barnes put it, that guy went hard. He'd throw so much money, and this was when I was first in the league, that I used to take my foot and scoop the sh under my chair and either re-throw it or put some in my pocket. I'm like, you realize what I can do with this money? Now, of course, Iverson has refuted this claim, but his side of the events might be even more absurd. As AI said, they did not go to a strip club. They went to a TGI Fridays and that quote, first of all, it was like $9,000 at most. And there were never any strippers at the TGI Fridays on City Line, unless I brought them. Sometimes I brought a bunch. And I suppose in those cases, yes, the bill could get up to 40K because they didn't have the endless appetizers thing back then. So. If you believe one side of the story here, you believe that Allen Iverson would drop $40,000 at a strip club and that Matt Barnes would reach down and steal some of the stripper's money to pay his own bills. And if you believe the other side, you believe that Allen Iverson used to bring strippers into a TGI Fridays. Whether they actually perform there is anybody's guess. All I know is, again, Allen Iverson, you were a savage. Number two, we talking about practice? We all know about the famous rant that Allen Iverson had during the 2002 season in which he said the word practice 22 times. What you might not know about that press conference, however, is what led to that rant. As before the 2002 season, AI began to have some serious concerns about his body. Standing under six feet tall and weighing around 160 pounds, just playing in the NBA should have been hard for Allen. But of course, for a future Hall of Famer, just playing wasn't enough. As during his time with the Sixers, AI was expected to be the focal point of his team's offense every single game. And to make things even harder on him, Iverson rarely left the court to take a break. For his career, he actually averaged 41.7 minutes per game and led the league in minutes seven times. To show you just how ridiculous that is, keep in mind that the last player to average over 41.7 minutes per game in a season who was not named Allen Iverson was LeBron James in 2006. So. 
When you combine his smaller frame with the minutes and tremendous amount of shots he put up game after game, you can see why AI began to become concerned about the beating his body was taking. Especially in an era that NBA legends love to remember as a much tougher and more physical style of basketball. So, in order to attempt to make his career last as long as possible, Allen Iverson went to NBA Hall of Famer Gary Payton and asked him, what should I do? To which Payton replied, that his coach George Carl did not make him practice during the season. And so, listening to Payton, uh, that's exactly what Allen Iverson decided to do. He decided he would sit out practices so that he could focus on games. Which is what makes his 2002 season all the more incredible, as even though he was not practicing, AI led the league in scoring with 31.4 points per game and was named to the second team All-NBA. Unfortunately though, the Philadelphia Philadelphia media did not care about his on-court stats as much as they cared about the fact that he was not practicing with his team. So throughout that season, Allen was continuously asked about why he was not practicing. And finally, after getting asked one too many times, Allen did snap and the practice ramp became a big part of his legacy. Why he chose this day to snap, nobody knows for sure. Some, including Iverson himself, say it's because he became emotional due to the fact that his best friend had died earlier in the season. Others have said that he was drinking, which Allen Iverson denies. So what really happened that day, we may never know for sure. Just remember that this decision not to practice did pay off, as currently AI is fourth all time in minutes per game and the other three players ahead of him all played in the 1960s. And number one, a lasting legacy. Allen Iverson was not blessed with the height that is given to to most NBA basketball players. He is not tall. In fact, he's around the average size of an American male living in the United States today. And it's because of this that Allen Iverson had to work every single day of his basketball career to prove everyone around him wrong. To show them that in a sport dominated by giants, sometimes a small guy can still shine. This dominance by a player who had everything going against him inspired an entire generation of basketball players. And at the end of the day, looking past the numbers, I think that's Allen Iverson's biggest accomplishment. He was a huge reason as to why many of the players in the NBA today started to love basketball. To show you what I mean, let's listen to the words of Isaiah Thomas, who to me is the perfect example because he's another small guard who had to prove people wrong every step of the way. Because because of these similarities, Allen Iverson was Isaiah Thomas's role model, and IT has said he's pound for pound the best ever. He changed the whole culture, changed the whole aspect of small guards. No doubt I modeled my game after him. Not just every small guard, every guard in the NBA that wanted a little flashiness in their game wanted to be like Allen Iverson. So many NBA players agree with this statement, including Kobe Bryant, who has posted on Instagram saying, your impact on the game will be felt for generations. And even Steph Curry, whose dad played in the NBA, has said, as a little kid, I always wanted to be like Allen Iverson. So you can see the legacy that Allen Iverson left behind is special. It's actually really one of a kind. Watching someone of his size dominate clearly had a huge impact on anyone who watched Allen Iverson play. So much so that like Kobe said, Allen Iverson's impact on the game of basketball will be felt for a very long time. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around 6 p.m. Eastern time. Basically what I'm saying is that if you love basketball, if you love the NBA, subscribe so you do not miss a single video. And if you're already subscribed, you are awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and what have a song when i started balling i was young you gonna think about me when i'm gone i need that money like the ring i never want i want saucing 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 on you